This is the start of our chapter 2 notes for trigonometry. So the first thing I want to do is just review a little bit of right angle trigonometry from last year. So if we look at the top right corner, we've got right triangle ABC with vertices capital A, capital B, and capital C, and sides opposite those vertices of the lowercase letters. So opposite vertice A would be side little a, opposite vertice B is side little b, and opposite vertice C is side little c. So we could name the angle at vertex A in two different ways. We could call uh, the angle at vertex A angle CAB, or we could also call that angle BAC using the vertices of the, of the right triangle. Two different ways to express the hypotenuse in triangle ABC. Well, the hypotenuse is always opposite or across from the 90 degree angle. So in this case, we could call the hypotenuse little b, or we could also call the hypotenuse AC using the vertices. Express the Pythagorean relationship for triangle ABC in two ways. We could use the lowercase letters, so little a squared plus little c squared equals little b squared, or we could use the vertices and express the relationship as ab squared plus bc squared equals ac squared. An expression for the sine of angle A, so starting at angle A, the sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite to angle A is little a over the hypotenuse of little b. An equation for tangent of angle C. So starting at angle C, tangent of angle C would be opposite over adjacent, so little c over little a would be the expression for the tangent of angle C. And for part f, if cosine of angle C is equal to little a over little b, what is an expression for little a? Well, what we would have to do is rearrange that equation for little a. So isolate little a, and we would do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by little b, and then we would get our new expression for little a to be cosine of angle C times little b. I also have written down here SOKOTOA. SOKOTOA is the acronym we use to remember what sine, cosine, and tangent stood for. So the uh, all three letters go together. So it's the first three letters, then the second three letters, then the third three letters. So SOH stands for the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine stands for adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tangent stands for opposite over adjacent. So you can think of SOKOTOA grouped into three letters at a time. Uh, what we're going to start with um, today, though, is talking about angles in standard position and what they are. So an angle in standard position is any angle that you get by rotating what we call a ray about the origin. And the origin is the 0, 0 point on our Cartesian plane. So 0, 0, that's the point where the x and y inter, um, axes intersect. The starting position of the ray is always along the positive x-axis. That's called the initial arm of the angle in standard position. So initial arm. And the final position after a rotation about the origin is the terminal arm terminal arm of the angle. Um, an angle is said to be in standard position if its vertex is at the origin of the coordinate grid and its initial arm coincides with the positive x-axis. So for example, we've got a diagram here, this angle from the initial arm, so the initial arm would be the arm that coincides with the positive x-axis, the terminal arm would be the other arm of our angle in standard position, and our angle in standard position we could label with theta. So angles in standard position always move counterclockwise from the initial arm to the terminal arm. And angles in standard position are always shown on the Cartesian plane. So you have your x-axis and you have your vertical y-axis. And these axes divide the plane into four what we call quadrants. And we've talked about what these quadrants are before in previous years, but we'll just review that quadrant one is in the top right uh, corner of our Cartesian plane, quadrant two, top left, quadrant three, bottom left, and then quadrant four is the bottom right. So that angle theta, that is our angle in standard position. So notice the vertex of our um, angle is right at the origin here. 
the vertex of that angle. The um, initial arm is along the positive x-axis, and the terminal arm could be in any of the four quadrants. The one that we have here, though, uh, the terminal arm is in quadrant 2. So we're going to talk about what a reference angle is. So um, a reference angle, what it is, is it is the acute angle, acute angle meaning between 0 and 90 degrees, that is created between the terminal arm and the nearest x-axis. That is what we call the reference angle. So the reference angle is always positive and measures between 0 and 90 degrees. The right triangle that contains the reference angle and has one leg on the x-axis is known as the reference triangle. So what we're going to do now is looking at that diagram, we're going to draw in where the reference angle is and then where the reference triangle would be for that angle in standard position. So we know that the reference angle is always from the terminal arm to the nearest x-axis. So in this case, from the terminal arm to the nearest x-axis, that would be what we call theta r in there. That would be our reference angle for that angle theta. The reference triangle would be the triangle that contains that reference angle. So the only way that we can ever come up with a reference triangle is if we go from the tip of the terminal arm straight down. That would be the right angle triangle. So the right angle triangle, or our reference triangle, contains the reference angle, has the negative x-axis as its horizontal leg, has a vertical leg going from the negative x-axis straight up to the tip of the terminal arm, and the hypotenuse of our reference triangle would actually be the terminal arm of our angle that's in standard position. We're now going to go through drawing a reference angle for any angle in standard position in each of the four quadrants. So for the first example, we're going to do an angle in standard position that terminates in quadrant 1. So if this was itself theta, the angle in standard position, the reference angle, since the angle in angles that terminate in quadrant 1 are already less than 90 degrees, those angles are actually equal to their reference angles. So the, the angle itself and the reference angle are actually the exact same angle. In quadrant 2, if I was to draw an angle that terminates in quadrant 2, whoops, that wasn't very good. So there we go. There's an angle that terminates in quadrant 2. So that is theta, the angle. There we go. Um, that's our angle theta in standard position. And the reference angle for that angle would be from the terminal arm to the nearest x-axis. So that would be our reference angle in there for that angle theta in standard position. In quadrant 2, we can notice that the reference angle and the angle in standard position theta, they actually add up to 180 degrees. So if we know 1, um, of either the reference angle or the angle in standard position, we can always find the other angle um, knowing that relationship between the two. So we could get theta, for example, by knowing that 180 degrees subtract the reference angle. That would give us our angle theta in standard position. In quadrant 3, if we were to draw an angle that terminates in quadrant 3. So if that was our angle theta, the reference angle for that angle would be the angle between here and here. So between the negative x-axis and the terminal arm, that would be theta, our reference angle, right in here. So that's our reference angle. And the connection between theta and theta r in quadrant 3, so if I wanted to know what theta was, theta would actually be 180 degrees plus whatever my reference angle was. And in quadrant 4, so if that was my angle in standard position, theta, my reference angle for that angle in standard position would be right in there from the terminal arm to the closest x-axis and my connection between my angle in standard position and my reference angle theta would be 360 subtract my reference angle. 
So if you're given your angle in standard position, you can always find the reference angle for that angle. And the same works for if you're given your reference angle, you can find the angles in standard position with that given reference angle. And that's what we're going to look at in the next little part here. So the angles in standard position with a reference angle of 20 degrees are. So we're given a reference angle of 20 degrees. So what we need to do is draw four angles in standard position, one that terminates in each of the four quadrants. And there's actually going to be one angle in each quadrant that has that reference angle of 20 degrees. So if we were to draw an angle in standard position that terminates in quadrant one, if the reference angle was given to us as 20 degrees, well in quadrant one we know that the reference angle and the angle in standard position are equal, so that's why there's four blanks. The first um, angle in standard position comes from quadrant one, or the angle in standard position that terminates in quadrant one. Um, now we have to look at, to get our second, third, and fourth blanks, we have to look at the angles in standard position that terminate in quadrant two, three, and four. So if I was to draw an um, angle in standard position in quadrant two, that's the angle in standard position. That's what we're looking for. We know, though, that the reference angle is 20 degrees. So we know that that little part is 20 degrees. So in order for me to get the angle theta that's in standard position, theta would actually be 180 subtract 20 or 160 degrees. So that would be our second angle that has a reference angle of 20 degrees. 160 degrees. Um, our third angle, we would draw our angle in standard position that terminates in quadrant three. The whole angle itself is what we are trying to find. We know that the reference angle, this little angle in there, is 20 degrees. So if that's 20 degrees, we know that theta would equal to 180 plus 20. So 200 degrees, that would be our third angle in standard position that has a reference angle of 20 degrees. And the last angle um, we're going to draw terminates in quadrant 4. So we want to decide what is that angle theta that has a reference angle of 20 degrees. Well, the reference angle would be that angle in there. That would be 20 degrees. So to get the angle theta, we would do 360 subtract 20 which equals 340 degrees. So that would be our fourth angle that has a reference angle of 20 degrees. So anytime you're given a reference angle value, draw an angle in standard position in each of the four quadrants, draw in the reference angle and put label the reference angle, and then you can determine the angle theta by knowing the connections between the reference angle and the angle in standard position in each of the four quadrants. The next part of this section involves knowing two special right triangles, and you do need to memorize these. So special right triangles, the first one um, that we're going to look at is the 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, but we'll just go up top here. So for angles of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, we can determine the exact value of each trigonometric ratio. Exact values do not include decimals, so make sure for when, you asked, when you're asked for an exact value, you never divide your answer out and give it as a decimal. You're going to leave your answers as fractions. And, and also leave your answers with root signs, not, you don't actually want to take the square root of a number unless it's a perfect square number. Okay, so drawing the diagonal of a square with side length 1 gives a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So we've got 45 degrees in the bottom left uh, corner of our 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. We know that this angle up top here also must be 45 because the interior angles of a triangle we know have to add up to 180 degrees. So the leg lengths are given to us as 1. To find the hypotenuse, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared. So 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2 equals c squared. So the square root of 2 would equal c. So the hypotenuse of our first special triangle is equal to the square root of 2. So now if you memorize that special triangle, um, so memorize the 
three angles and the three side values. The sine of 45 degrees, you would start at 45 degrees, and knowing that sine stands for opposite over hypotenuse, we could find the sine ratio for 45 degrees. So sine of 45 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, would be 1 over the square root of 2. Cosine of 45 degrees, adjacent over hypotenuse, that would be 1 over the square root of 2 as well, and tangent to 45 opposite over adjacent would be 1 over 1, which equals 1. Now we're going to leave these values um, for sine and cosine of 45 degrees, we're going to leave them as fractions like that, because again, if I divided 1 divided by square root of 2 in my calculator, I would get a decimal, which is not an exact value, and we want the exact value. So the three answers that I've put in boxes, those would be their exact values for the sine, cosine, and tangent of 45 degrees. The second special triangle that you have to memorize is called a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. So you can see from the diagram here, we've got 30 degrees in our top, um, top right corner, 60 degrees in the bottom left, and then the 90 degrees. So 60 plus 30 plus 90, that adds up to 180, so our angles are all good there. We've got a base side length leg, uh, the leg length of 1. Um, the other leg we've got as B, and then the hypotenuse as 2. So knowing 2 out of the 3 sides, we could solve for B using the Pythagorean theorem. So we've got 1 squared plus B squared equals 2 squared, and we know then that b squared equals four, 2 squared, which is 4, subtract 1 squared, which is 1, so b squared would be 3, and b would equal the square root of 3. So we know that this side over there, b is equal to the square root of 3. So that is also a special triangle that you have to memorize, because again, it allows us to find the exact sine, cosine, and tangent values for 30 degrees, as well as for 60 degrees. So sine of 60 degrees, we're going to look at the 60 degree angle. Sine stands for opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 60 would be the square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse would be 1 over 2, and tangent of 60 degrees opposite over adjacent would be the square root of 3 over 1. For the 30 degree angle, sine of 30 degrees opposite over hypotenuse would be 1 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse would be the square root of 3 over 2, and the tangent of 30 degrees opposite over adjacent would be 1 over the square root of 3. So those are our exact sine, cos, and tan values for 60 degrees as well as for 30 degrees. Now we're going to go to a few examples and use what we've, what we've sort of talked about so far in this lesson. So we're going to practice sketching some angles in standard position. We're asked to state the quadrant in which the terminal arm lies and label the reference angle theta r. So the first angle that we're given is 36 degrees. So if I was to draw an angle that's 36 degrees, we know that would terminate in quadrant 1 since it's between 0 and 90 degrees, so it would be somewhere in there. So that would be 36 degrees in there, and that would be equal to our reference angle as well, since in quadrant 1 the angle itself is equal to the reference angle, and that angle terminates in quadrant 1, so I'll just put a Roman numeral for quadrant 1 there. Um, the second example, B, we are asked to draw an angle of 210 degrees. So 210 degrees would look something like this with our initial arm. Again, it's, it's bigger than 180 degrees, so we know it would terminate in quadrant 3. So that would be the 210 degrees, the black angle there. And the reference angle would be just this little angle in here. That would be our reference angle, theta r, and that terminates, we said, in quadrant 3, the angle itself. The reference angle where I've drawn it in, it would have a value of the difference between 210 and 180, so that would be 30 degrees. My reference angle there, theta r, would have a value of 30 degrees. The next example we have 315 degrees, so if we were to draw an angle in standard position that's 315 degrees, it would terminate in quadrant 4, so that is 315 degrees, 
and the reference angle for that angle would be right in there and it would have a value of the difference between 360 and 315 so that would be 45 degrees that's our reference angle in blue that I've added in that's theta r in there and that terminated the angle and actual angle in standard position the 315 degree angle terminated in quadrant 4 we also have the last one here 130 degrees if we were asked to draw an angle in standard position it would terminate in quadrant 2 so that would be our 130 degree angle and the reference angle for that angle would be in there and that reference angle would actually have a value the difference between 180 and 130 which would be 50 degrees that would be our reference angle and I'll also add in the Roman numeral for the angle in standard position 130 degrees it terminated in quadrant 2 um, our second example asked us to determine the angle in standard position when an angle of 40 degrees is reflected in the in the y-axis in the x-axis and then in the y-axis followed by a reflection in the x-axis so before we get into um, doing this example I first just want to draw an angle of 40 degrees in standard position so if I was to draw an angle in standard position of 40 degrees it would look something like that there's our 40 degree angle in standard position now if we were reflecting that angle um, in the y-axis so the y-axis is our vertical axis so the initial arm we know that we are determining the angle in standard position well angles in standard position their initial arm they stay always on the positive x-axis so it would just be the terminal arm that's being reflected over the x-axis or sorry over the y-axis so in the original 40 degree angle the terminal arm is in quadrant 1 well if it gets reflected over the y-axis it would then be in quadrant 2 so it would actually be reflected and end up over there in quadrant 2 but the 40 degree angle would actually be this angle there that would be the new 40 degree angle but we want to determine what is this angle there in standard position well it would be 180 subtract one for uh, subtract 40 degrees so that would be 140 degrees the angle in standard position for the next one uh, we want to reflect the same original 40 degree angle except for now we want to reflect it over the x-axis so again the initial arm doesn't move it stays along the positive x-axis the terminal arm though started off in quadrant one when the angle was 40 degrees but if it gets reflected over the x-axis the horizontal axis it's going to reflect down to quadrant four so this is the angle in standard position but this would be now where the 40 degree angle lies so the angle in standard position though would be 360 subtract 40 which would be 320 degrees that would be our angle in standard position now the last uh, part is a little more difficult because we have to do two reflections one followed by the other so uh, starting with our 40 degree angle in standard position if we reflected in the y-axis we would get our first angle of 140 degrees that we got in part a but then if we took that angle in standard position and reflected that terminal arm from quadrant 2 over the x-axis it would end up actually being down here in quadrant three so our initial arm and then our terminal arm would be in quadrant three this would be our 40 degree angle in here and the whole angle theta in standard position would be 180 plus 40 which would be uh, 180 190 200 210 220 so that would be 220 degrees would be our angle theta in standard position for this last example, example three, we've got Allie is learning to play the piano. Her teacher uses a metronome to help her keep time. The pendulum arm of the metronome is 10 centimeters long. For one particular tempo, the setting results in the arm moving back and forth from a starting position of 60 degrees to 120 degrees. What horizontal distance does the tip of the arm move in one beat? give an exact answer. So we've got our diagram here. We've got a starting position of the pendulum arm 
is in the 60 degree position and that uh, side length has a value of 10. That's the uh, pendulum arm. And then we've got our final position from 0 to 120 degrees with the final position of the arm, which is uh, over at the 120 degree mark, and it's also 10 centimeters long, since it's the same arm just swinging back and forth. Both of those arms, same arm, both going to be 10 centimeters in length. What we want to find is that horizontal blue distance that I've added in there. And because 60 degrees, it would be 30 degrees away from our vertical y-axis, and then 120 degrees from the 90 or vertical uh, position of the positive y-axis, 90 to 120 is also 30. So we know that the blue distance, um, each half, half of the blue distance are going to be equal. So the left-hand side of the left of the uh, positive y-axis and the right-hand side of the of the horizontal blue line on the right of the positive. Um, y-axis are going to be equal. So what we can do now is we know that the 60 degrees only goes from 0 to 60 and then the remainder, so this little part in here, that would be actually 30 degrees because we know that from the positive x-axis to the positive y-axis is 90 degrees. So we could add in that is 30 degrees in there on in that little right triangle and we know that's going to be 90 degrees there so we could call what we want to find x so we know that if we use the sine ratio within that right triangle the sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so opposite is x over the hypotenuse of 10 and then if we multiplied both sides there by 10 we would have 10 times the sine of 30 degrees is equal to x. But we don't want a decimal answer, we want an exact answer. But the sine of 30 degrees, that should sort of ring a bell in your head, reminding you that in our special triangle, our special 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, which I'll just draw over here. For the 30 degrees, sine of 30 degrees stood for opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2. That's the exact value for sine of 30 degrees is a half. So x equals 10 times a half, or 5 equals x. But that's not our full horizontal distance. Our full horizontal distance, I'll call hd, is going to be 2 times the x value, or 2 times 5, which equals to 10 centimeters. So 10 centimeters would be our final answer. I'll just put a couple stars around that. That would be our horizontal distance in one beat of that metronome arm moving from 60 degrees to 120 degrees.